Okay, well, uh, welcome everyone to our quarterly community town hall meeting. Uh, the last one we had about three months ago, so Garrison Commander is not here tonight, but our entire staff is here, so we'll conduct the town hall as normal. So if you have any questions at any time as we get toward the end, I would ask that uh, it be an open forum. If you, so if you have a question before that, you'll just raise your hand, okay? Uh, one of the soldiers will bring you a pencil and a piece of paper up there. And uh, you can write your question down. We'll give it to the appropriate service provider up here. They'll try to answer it for you. Or if you want to stand up and ask your question live and in person, you can do that also. The question and answer discussion uh, point will come at the end. So on behalf of the Garrison Commander, welcome to the quarterly town hall meeting. I think, Suzanne, we have a uh, proclamation signing to kick us off. Hello, everybody. I'm Suzanne James, ACS Director. Uh, April is month of the military child and also Child Abuse Prevention Month. And so it's our custom that we uh, bring awareness to the community with a proclamation signing um, that reflects the Army-wide theme of child abuse prevention. And so the theme this year is Children's Safety Comes First, Be Ready to End Child Abuse. And if I could have the next slide, please. Uh, it shows the theme for this month. And again, uh, in alignment with our readiness and resiliency focus, we ask the community to also be part of prevention and intervene and report. And please come to ACS for resources. We have a table that is just chock full of wonderful things that we would love you to take back to your offices, back to your work areas, sprinkle these resources around, to show what ACS can assist you with, with child abuse prevention. And so, sir, if you do the honors and sign our proclamation, children's safety comes first, be ready to end child abuse. Thank you, everybody. I think next we have our volunteer report. Good evening, everybody. always we have our volunteers reporting right tonight at this town hall meeting and we've got five very deserving and important honorees. Without further ado, uh, we will kick it off with the active duty soldier reporter is Captain Michael Dawson. This is the second year Mr. Defense and Sue on in. Let's go. Our family member of the quarter, Ashley Young from the 6th and 2nd ASB. She volunteers with several different agencies here at the garrison. And it was stiff competition, but she ended up first place. <laughs> Our youth volunteer of the quarter is Jamie Brow Dawson, also from Suwon Air Base. She's very active with the Chapel and Osan School. <laughs> Next is Corporal Ji Young So, BJT U.S. Army Garrison Humphreys. Uh, he's a dedicated and very conscientious volunteer at the ACS headquarters with a lunchtime learning with the pieces. And last but not least, and I see almost the whole uh, confinement activity is, is here. I'm wondering if anybody's minding the store. <laughs> uh, Captain uh, Sonsini, Acting First Sergeant Freeman, and the Guide on Bear. Uh, they are a unit volunteer of the quarter. It's uh, partly based on hours, but it's also uh, based on some other factors, size of the unit, and different various volunteer activities. We certainly appreciate their support.
Before I turn it on, turn it over for uh, follow on for the rest of the town hall. I was asked to just give a quick and dirty uh, briefing, if you will, and a couple of blurbs about what we call Operation Appreciation. And we've got a handout and flyer. Basically, it's a brand new volunteer award program, if you will, that we try to enhance what we already have. We basically have the annual and quarterly volunteer awards here, but uh, there's several agencies on the installation, MWR, PX, commissary, give us, or in some cases we also purchase, and discount coupons. Uh, we've got the volunteer important person parking spot at the commissary and over at the fitness center. So uh, we try to enhance what our, you know, our recognition to our employees, incentive to, to the volunteer, and, and so forth. But I've got a flyer, and it's also got Volunteer Appreciation Week next week. It's got all our activities. And next Friday night, you're all invited to come to our annual volunteer recognition ceremony. Not only do we have the volunteers of the year that we'll be honoring, we'll have the organization points of contact or OPOX for those that are in the know. And uh, we're really looking forward to the Humphrey Central Elementary School Motown performance. You're all welcome and hopefully to see you there. Okay. Hey, I will tell you guys, uh, the, that's my favorite part of the town hall right there, the volunteer recognition ceremony. How about another round of applause for all those folks? For those of you that don't know, the volunteer, uh, how they how they recognize those folks and how they practice by the number of hours, not by the size of the unit. So that's saying something about that unit, that youth, and those individuals, that family member, and that service member. So really great stuff. Okay, I think we're going to go into our staff briefings. We're going to start it off with uh, DPTMS, Mr. Rex Brunt. Rex? Yeah, good evening. The uh, first slide's about activities that are going on. It's the, with the, there's a newcomer brief every week where for a new, primarily for a new uh, employee soldiers that report to uh, USAG Humphreys Head Start, Green Head Start program, uh, begins 16 to 18 and then 23 to 25 April. Command group, or meet a command group, occurs at the PX in the lobby or, or atarium from uh, 2 May, 6 June, and also on 3 July. Town hall meeting is, uh, or the next town hall meeting is on 15 July. And then upon request, you can get an emergency preparedness brief. And the immediate actually started already. Focus exercise or passage coaching exercise. It's an EO exercise. It really doesn't involve families for this, uh, for this exercise. It's more of a setup, tear it up and make sure all the equipment. The only thing that involves the family are make sure your neo packages are, are together. Those will be inspected by your uh, neo warden. Critical information to the community. Uh, correction, this full scale exercise is coming up and it follows along with the summer threat, uh, which is a monsoon rainy season and sometimes not. Sometimes there are also thought there are also typhoons that come through this area or the peninsula. And uh, since we're close to the, since we're close to the, actually, you don't, even if you're further away, it can have an impact. But we're close to the, the coastline, so it will have a bigger impact in Humphreys. We will get ample warning if this should occur, and there are plans in place to protect the community if it does occur. Giant voice be activated for almost uh, any type of critical type of incident uh, and that's from typhoon uh, terrorist incident or closing of the gates other type of important type incidents telephone mass notification you can get that by registering at the back table this is where you actually text on your cell phone when a, when uh, something of significance that occurs Every morning, there's PT going on for soldiers, and the soldiers, and the actually the Eighth Army change, and also we have changed our 
APFT or PRT or PT in the morning starts a half hour later from 6.30 to 8, so be cautious with soldiers. Uh, they have the right of way, even though they may be not where they're supposed to be, but they still have the right of way. The theater opens on the 16th, which is tomorrow. Uh, did, uh, I visited there today. It's very nice. I think uh, it's a great improvement. The civil defense defense will not occur this quarter. It will be tied into the full-scale exercise. Every Tuesday, again, there's a newcomer's briefing in April. It's ongoing now. It's a Contusa Friendship Week. Tax Day is on the 15th. Next town hall meeting is uh, July 15th, or exactly today. Sorry about that. The uh, Korean Head Start, I've already talked about that. Easter is Sunday. Volunteer Appreciation Week is 21 to 25. Birthday celebration on the 21st. Threat awareness reporting. Training is on the 24th. And then the Volunteer of the Year ceremony is on the 25th. Children's Day, an important holiday for Republic of Korea. Sexual harassment, assault response training. This is significant. Uh, I know family members not at, not attend, but all civilian personnel and soldiers attend this mandatory training. OPSEC training on the 22nd. Training holiday on the 23rd. Memorial Day on the 25th. In June, quarterly installation operations meeting on the 17th. EEC or Sabrini training, chemical, make sure you're chemical training for soldiers and also civilian employees. And then that's, if you have any questions for DPTMS, I'll take them either at the end or, and you can either turn it in by a note or in person. Hey, very quickly, uh, what Rex is talking about, a lot of events on that calendar there. And, you know, you have hard copy handouts, so you don't need to write anything down. We'll give you some of those slides. Uh, our, we post a community calendar on our website, so you can see all the stuff we're talking about now. But particularly what Rex discussed, the uh, full-scale exercise in May. Uh, please pass that around to the community and, and folks in your formations. There's going to be some inconveniences around the, the, the garrison for about a four- or five-day window in May. Uh, as we close some gates, do some ATFD, more protection type drills. So bear with us. You'll hear a lot of announcements over the giant voice. Uh, we'll, we'll caveat everything with the exercise three times before and after. Uh, but just bear with us as we go through that. It's a mandatory required exercise annually uh, for every garrison worldwide. So later on in May, you'll see some of those inconveniences. So bear with us. Traffic will be backed up. Okay. Mr. Clink. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Don Clink from MWR. I have a number of events that I want to cover, so I'll, I'll kind of move through them quickly. I'm, I'm probably not going to tell you everything that you probably would need to know about these events, but uh, uh, I'm going to start by telling you that if there's something else that you do want to know, the Humphreys MWR website is now up and running, uh, actually for the first time since uh, maybe the last two years. But it's a new re re uh, reworked website, uh, um, a pretty handy tool, uh, pretty easy, HumphreysMWR.com. So starting in April, this is my favorite town hall because there's so much stuff that uh, we're talking about April, May, and June, and a little bit in July. So there's so much stuff going on that, that this is really my uh, my favorite town hall of the year. Uh, April 19th is the Earth Day Egg Extravaganza. Uh, we do this every year, and uh, it, it starts off with a fun run. This is all this all happens over at the Soldier Park next to what the the main community gym, what we used to call the Super. Uh, on the fields out there. And uh, the run starts at 9 o'clock. You can register at 8 o'clock. And then that's followed if you, if you haven't been to uh, an extravaganza before. We have all kinds of things for mainly focused around the kids. Uh, there's a big egg hunt that takes place. We separate them by age and, and uh, uh, plenty of stuff for the kids to uh, to get an easy. It's more of a, uh, an egg hunt or egg grab than it is an egg hunt. Uh, on the 21st through the 25th, it was mentioned that we have Volunteer Appreciation Week, so great, great opportunity to uh, honor all those folks that, that absolutely uh, make MWR possible. Without the volunteers, there really couldn't be very much of an MWR. Uh, in 
25th, it was also mentioned that the uh, Volunteer of the Year ceremony is here at the CAC at 1800. And jumping into May, uh, May 3rd is the Amazing Race. Uh, we did it the first time last year, very much like the TV version of the same thing. Um, I would mention to you that the first prize, uh, uh, Amazing Race is a two-person two team, uh, $20 entry fee. Be, but uh, well worth the money because the uh, first prize is two round trip tickets, air tickets anywhere in Asia. And the second t uh, prize is uh, uh, KTX round trip tickets anywhere in Korea. You can sign up at Outdoor Rec uh, or call 753-3013. They'll help you out. Uh, the 17th of May is, is Spring Fest. Uh, that's at Independence Park, the park over near the gate. That's an open to our Korean friends uh, event. Uh, runs between 12 and 2200. Uh, th this is one of our two really major events of the year. There's, there's, there's a gazillion things to do, uh, all kinds of food booths. Uh, we have the best tent set up. We have entertainment in the best tent. Things going on all day long, and the, and the field over there is literally full of uh, uh, things for both kids and adults to do. Uh, too, too numerous to mention, but it's, it's a big day. Uh, don't forget it, May, May 17th is Spring Fest, so make, make plans to be there. Uh, right now, tentatively, we're going to open this Splish Splash water park on the 31st. Uh, we checked around with our partners on the peninsula, and we found out that they're opening some of them a week earlier. So we're, we're working with our contractor to try to squeeze open uh, that week earlier on Memorial Day. Um, little bit tricky to do right now, but we're working on that. But worst case scenario, we'll be open on the 31st of May um, at the water park. Uh, the, uh, I don't know if you know this, but the, uh, the game, the room next to us, uh, just to the other side of that wall, is going to be a CAC virtual game, uh, a gaming room. And we're going to have uh, a combination of Xbox, online gaming, and arcade area in that room over there. That's being renovated. We had a really, really long, tough time. We've been a year trying to get this thing done with the start and stop of, uh, of capital purchase, minor construction, but it's coming along, and, and very soon we should have that game that game room done over there for you. And the good news is that just outside the building, we're also going to put two uh, spring golf uh, cubes out there. It'll be big, full size, bigger than racquetball court, and uh, uh, those contracts are, are done, so we're going to have that out up and running sometime this summer. The game room hopefully will be a lot sooner than that. I mentioned the website, so jumping into June, uh, the theater production in June, uh, it's called Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And it, they, they do those productions right here in this room. Um, I won't even try to tell you what that play is about, but basically it's a biblical story. And the, the dates are five through seven June and 13 and 14 June. So a three-day weekend first, and then a two-day weekend to follow. And uh, it's five dollars for adults, three dollars for kids. And I've never had a, a, a bad report on any of the productions that those folks have done for us. Uh, Twenty through the twenty-second is the Boss, Boss Beach Blast, and uh, contact your boss folks if you're interested in that. It's a big thing, five hundred plus soldiers every year. Uh, Twenty-two through twenty-four, we'll follow on with a, a beach blast for the kids, the teens, uh, called Summer Jam. And then the last event I want to mention to you is the 4th of July at the Freedom Field over again by the Super Gem and fireworks and the whole the whole uh, whole program will happen over there this year, uh, just as it does every year. So that's all from MWR. Thank you. Yeah, good evening. I'm Dave Hartsfield. I'm from the uh, Lands Analysis Integration and Transformation Office. Our office does a lot of things for Paris Commander. And part of that is helping manage uh, what's going on with the transformation going on there. And if you haven't noticed, or if you don't know, uh, we're in the middle of one of the largest transformations of the world in history. So we're making history. A lot of the things that you see going on around us uh, are directly related to that. We're a little bit tripling in size and population, so uh, you're able to see what's going on around you on a day-to-day -day basis. That's a part of that. So um, as a part of that, we've got numerous units joining our work. Say that everything that's in Young Sign currently is heading our way. Um, as of today, there's no unit moves scheduled for 2014, but in 2015, we've got about 75, or actually 2015, 2016, we've got about 75 major units moves. The next unit to move significantly is coming our way in the 652nd Navy Day, and uh, that'll happen approximately January 2015, according to the report from the Space. I'm pretty 
make sure you've seen all the construction and everything like this. And, and Mr. Scott will talk about that here shortly. But along with that comes the requirement for a lot of what we call internal swing space meters that will impact everybody here in the next year. So within the next, um, within the next 90 days, things that you'll see happen, things will probably end. 2014 has marked and we did have an environmental review to um, go to the 1019 for the current location. Um, July 2014, we had an impact project family member to move from their current location at 1137 to 577. The chaplain's office moved from building 1223 to 701. Um, that was 701 to the first floor and 577. KSC moved This list changes on a daily basis as updates go out. We'll make sure it gets out to the community. And if you have any questions, you can always call my office on 754 6109 and we'll send you the question. Mr. Scott. Good evening, everybody. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm Bert Scott from the DPW. Um, previously, we briefed. Uh, some massive construction projects over the months, uh, fence moves, other associated mega details. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about uh, bypasses and what we're doing with some of the roadways uh, and some of the reasons behind that uh, so that you can have an appreciation for uh, some of this congestion and some of these challenges that are going to start to present themselves. Um, the first slide shows you uh, the, uh, some of the detours that we're going to discuss for a, a moment or two. And please, feel free to come. I'll be here afterwards. Come up and talk to me. Uh, we can point to some of the projects. And uh, if you've got a pet project, we can uh, discuss that in some detail. So please, you're welcome. Next slide, please. And that's it. Um, phase two in the northern section, we're going to be talking about the, the, the super geo, the previous note as the super gym detour. Uh, most of the folks have been affected by that already. Um, we've already started uh, a phase one, as you know, and as phase one completes, um, the phase two will start, uh, and that should last uh, several months. And hopefully we'll uh, move on from, from that. But one of the reasons that we keep doing these <coughs> road detours is because our utilities are going to be underground going to be in vaults and raceways and cracks um, and so we're not going to have the power lines and the, and the uh, utility poles and all of that above ground. So in order to do that we need to put those raceways that I talked about and those vaults bury them under the roadways or the side of the roadways. We can't uh, bury them under the buildings so that's the reason we're going that, uh, that direction. Next slide please. Going to be, uh, you've all, I think, run into it, you've gone off or, up, off or on post. Uh, the Beacon Hill bypass. Um, we hope that the contractor will complete the utility work ahead of schedule and reopen that uh, road early. Um, he's making noises like uh, that's going to happen. So we're hoping that, uh, can't hold him to it, but we're hoping that that's exactly what we'll come back and tell him. Gee Avenue, slide please. Next. Uh, Scheduled to implement on 15 April, today, um, tax day by the way, I hope you guys have gotten all your stuff in the mail. Um, traffic to this section of the airfield will have to use this bypass until Freedom Road North, the section in blue on the chart, uh, is completed at the end of July 14. Next slide, please. The intersection near the 304 Signal Battalion motor pool and the road through the new barracks area, the bypass is required to complete again utility work in the vicinity of that intersection. Slide number six, please. This chart shows the up to date of the projects around the G Avenue family housing. As you can see, a number of projects listed there West Construction Gate, family housing, the Child Development Center. Elementary school, Dodds 040, and uh, 
that associated with projects in that vicinity. The last slide shows us uh, looking at the fourth quarter 2014. Uh, these will be projects on the installation. Those in the blue font, um, AFH, Army Family Housing, 020, uh, Unaccompanied Enlisted Housing, 080, and the Televideo Center have been uh, bubbled out. What we, what we do is, is we, um, because of security, safety, and congestion, and a number of other factors, um, we try to move much of the construction off of the compound. Construction happen, so they don't have to go in and out of the DBIN system and the gate. We don't have the security issue. We don't have the third country national uh, and all of the issues uh, associated with uh, who came from what uh, what what country, and whether they're allowed on post or not. Uh, and then much construction is already. We haven't moved the fence, gained that land, and surrounded by our security fence. So we leave it outside the compound, the perimeter fence that is, um, and those projects are shaded gray, have not yet started construction. So one of the things that I would just kind of like to give you an appreciation for is they talked about we're building a new city, and uh, we're tripling the area from around 1,200 acres to about 3,600 acres. We're more than tripling our square footage, 7 million square feet, 22 million. Square feet. We're going from 9,000 supporting population to over 30,000. And what does this all cost? Well, we've done about $4 billion worth of construction under, on the way, under construction right now. And how many projects does that equal? About 60. Boom. But about 60. Well, in the next 18 months, as projects get completed, we reach the construction completion date. We move on, other projects open up, begin, start. We'll have over a hundred projects in 18 months, all working at the same time. Uh, to the tune of about six billion dollars under construction all at one time. So, a lot going on, a lot of activity. Um, and you've heard the old saying when you were working out in the uh, once super gym the short term pain for the long term gain. Going to experience some of this. You know, there's going to be some congestion and some uh, uh, some, some issues that we are, are doing our level best to work around so that it has the less amount of impact on your quality of life. But for the short term, we're going to have some issues. There's going to be there's going to be bypasses, and uh, we'll try to keep that to the bare minimum. We'll try to keep these projects on schedule. months or two years, we'll be on the other side of that mountain, and uh, we're just looking forward to having all those uh, units come down from Seoul and further north, all the way up into uh, KC and Pekin, Missouri, and all of those areas. And I'll be here. Please uh, feel free to come uh, shake my hand and uh, ask me why your lights don't work, and I'll, I'll do my best to get this uh, figured out. Next, we're going to talk to the DB, uh, DES, our security and safety folks. Uh, sir. Good evening, folks. Uh, Bob Aldridge, uh, DES. Uh, real quick, uh, the first slide uh, indicates the uh, all disclosures for uh, pass and ID and vehicle registration uh, DBIDs at the uh, law enforcement uh, admin uh, offices. As a note, please don't confuse the DBIDs offices with the years and ID CAC Those office closures, along with a reminder for these office closures, will be published well in advance in the uh, notice of notice. Uh, as a reminder, uh, 911 calls. Uh, it's important when you call. Uh, know your location, state the emergency, stay on the line, uh, and give a good uh, call back number so someone can reach you. Uh, reference to DBIS. Family members or soldiers, uh, ensure that you re register in DBIDs, either your AIP, civilians, if you extend, re register. Also, for newly 
newly arriving personnel that you would take back to the advance, they have 10 days to properly register in the database. This does a lot of things. Some people think, well, I'm registered in Yongsan, why do I have to re-register? Well, when they register in Yongsan, all of the data information that we collect, unit, phone number, address, those type of things are not populated at all. The one RC does not know the unit of assignment of the individual who's registered in advance. So it's imperative that we, law enforcement and fire and medical, have that information readily available for the transport. Next slide. Uh, bicycle traffic uh, problems. Uh, it's summertime. Uh, lots of people are out on bicycles. Uh, remember, if you're riding your bicycle, stay on, stay on the roadway. Not get on the sidewalks unless it's a riding bicycle path. And I believe there's only one uh, so far that we can get you around on the uh, roadway. Okay. So remind your folks wear the helmet, wear the vest, and stay on the roads. Also, with bicycle safety, uh, it is imperative that they register their bicycle with the DBIS Pass and ID Office for one stop or the right of entry. Uh, you don't have to have your bicycle present to register it, just fill out the form, bring the serial number with you, a sticker will be given to you, and you put that on the lower right front pole. Uh, what happens if you don't register? Well, if you go out, if you have a bicycle and you have not registered it, and you haven't looked at it in a while, and you go down and look at it, it's locked up outside, if there's a shoe tag tied to that handlebar, chances are by Friday that bicycle is going to be gone, because we do periodic bicycle roundup. We do, if a bicycle is not registered, we'll tag it. Within 48 hours, the traffic section uh, from law enforcement will go out and they will secure that bicycle. Uh, I remember seeing the other day someone reported a lost or stolen bicycle. Uh, if that was your friend, tell them to call the MPs. It probably got picked up. If it did, they can come back and get it as long as it's not your bike. Uh, subject to your questions, I'll be followed by the HR base update. Good evening, everyone. Dave Satterfield, Deputy DHR. Uh, first slide here. Uh, the word of the day is ADPAS. Uh, as you can see, Army Disaster Personnel Accountability and Assessment System. Uh, there's a website that we, we've identified here so that you as a, a citizen, as a DA civilian, as a family member, can go on and register on this system. And you say, Sounds great, Dave, but what does that mean to me? Well, we have a full-scale exercise coming up. You've already heard the, the uh, glitz and glimmer about that, EPTMS. Uh, we're going to try to flex that a little bit and see how we can work accountability of personnel into our full-scale exercise. Not just that, a little closer to home, with the recent active shooter incident that occurred in Fort Hood, uh, they actually implemented activation of this system to try to find uh, people who may have had some affiliation or a need to make contact with family members within that area. So it's good. It's it's relatively new. It hasn't been around for a very long time. Uh, tap into it. It's a good resource uh, for us to have at our avail. Uh, and of course, uh, this encompasses all units. Uh, we, can, we can reach out and touch anybody uh, as long as we have access. Uh, I just found out two days ago that I'm a core, so uh, I can I can tap into that system and pretty much find anybody anywhere, regardless of your your IC. Uh, and again, individual units, please ensure that your folks are going online and doing this because uh, we will not be uh, doing the data input as an individual thing, a family thing, if you will. Please do ensure that your folks are taking care of business. Speaking of taking care of business. Uh, we recently, within DHR, made a move. Our official mail and distribution center is no longer located in Building 543. As of yesterday, it's now located within the military post office. Uh, in order to go there, one, you need to know where it is. The post office is real close by, just out the store by the front counter and across the courtyard. Then you got to have a little map, which I've attached to the next slide. But, uh, just, just some information to know, operational hours, Monday through Wednesday and Friday, 13 to 1,700 hours, 
and then Thursday zero Thursday rather zero eight hundred to twelve hundred hours only. Uh, be aware though as you take mail of an official nature for outgoing processing to be sent out through the MPO itself. Uh, the cutoff for that is sixteen thirty hours daily. Uh, not open on weekends, and as I mentioned. slide here. Last but not least, AER, the Army Emergency Relief Campaign. Uh, once again, I, I stressed this during our last town hall, uh, soldiers helping soldiers. Uh, if you come through the gates, uh, actually the, the main gate every morning or uh, if you're traveling around uh, that side of post, you'll see that we have a thermometer up there. It's, uh, it's moving up. It's uh, probably a little bit more than halfway right now with 30 days left in the campaign that's probably not a bad place to be but uh, again lean lean forward in the foxhole uh, give uh, to a, a great benefaction to our soldiers uh, again, we're at about 48k and last but not least it's not supposed to be confused with the combined federal campaign subject to your questions I'll be Followed by Major Ellis Randall. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Major Ellis Randall, and uh, this is a uh, bittersweet moment. This is my last town hall. Uh, I'll be speaking at the end there, and uh, we'll be doing a little bit of a stacking uh, in post. Um, and my replacement will be here, Lieutenant Colonel Rob Hill. He'll be here in uh, July, so he'll be here for the next few weeks. Uh, as far as our office closure, uh, we, we always post him.
there's any organizations that would like us to come out, it's just our opportunity to answer questions about what we do, what the rule of law is, and, uh, and actually just to talk about both because it's new this year, so I guess we're going to here. Uh, so if you all have any questions regarding the law, they are point of contact me. This is our tax center slide. Um, today was uh, we had two uh, type two scheduled, uh, and tomorrow we move into our uh, six, our, our final uh, schedule, which is the 16th April to 14th June. Um, we've had some amazing results this year. We've actually served half what we've done. We did it this time last year. Uh, we've done uh, 1,143 federal returns, 393 state returns for a total amount of refunds of two million nine hundred seventy-seven dollars by five hundred. And amount BC uh, for the taxpayer is three hundred thirty-five thousand one hundred and ninety-four dollars. Uh, this is a free service we offer it um, to uh, invited contractors, uh, uh, DA civilians, and service members. And what's so neat? You, your dual military or your, if your spouse is coming in, you get an option to walk into our tax center, which is located uh, right on the first floor. That we, in our legal assistance, you can come over. And Walk over to the right, and they'll square your way. They'll give you electronic filing. And I do have my awesome uh, tax assistance coordinator, uh, Ms. Christine Hopkins. Uh, she can answer anything, we, anytime. There's an issue that stops people. We found out that she can get moving expenses set. Um, so there's never an answer that she cannot find. She will find out anything. So, um, we are very fortunate to have her again this year. Um, we have some outstanding soldiers. Um, and we have a bar of military manpower that have served with us, and uh, they're doing an outstanding job, as well as our civilian volunteers. We can never thank them enough for all the time they put in. Uh, our tax center will be closed on the 18th of April, just to give them a breather, since it's Good Friday, but we just went through the two days of the 15th of April. Uh, so uh, we no longer have the weekend hours starting on tomorrow. Um, so most of the taxes that we will be doing, um, it will be by train, because we just don't have the number of clients are coming up this year. Uh, taxes are due on the 15th of April, and uh, uh, however, because you're a college, you have until the 15th of June to actually file, but the, temp, the interest is pretty much going to be owe on the 16th of April. It doesn't matter to us. If you have any other questions, please contact our tax center at 753 568 They'll be more than willing to get you an appointment. As I stated earlier, here are eligible clients and the required documents just to make your tax filing experience that much easier. If you have issues and you cannot file electronically, we do offer the paper uh, filing option as well. So you can come in, you get your tax return, they'll print it out, and they'll send you the document that you have to do. But these are just a, these are all the required documents that you need in order to get the state return to you. And if there's any issues with rejections, as uh, Ms. Hawkins, types of returns that we use are new. The types of returns that we process are the 1043s and the 1040s. Um, schedules, uh, C's, if you have a small business or a small business, uh, and then there's notifications for Schedule C. And then rental income, um, just know that your depreciation has to be done prior to your uh, appointment. Uh, if there's any of you who are renting houses, we're all in the military, so my husband always says, I collect houses like people collect shoes. I just don't like doing that. Um, but if it's a business that you have, so if you've got six or seven houses out there, then we do reserve the right to do that because we want to make sure that you're, uh, you're getting uh, the best quality service. And if it's something that you see um, the actual certification of our tax year, we do reserve the right to, uh, to tell you to let you know that you can't be my customer, but we will appoint you as our service. Uh, and also, just wanted to plug, we started, and this is the, our inaugural team. Opportunity for young um, young people, high school students, to come out and actually brag and have them talk and uh, teaching them, you know, how to be a, a prosecutor, a defense counsel, witnesses. We're actually having.
have our judge for Korea, uh, Colonel, da Colonel Wendy Dacus, who's actually going to actually uh, judge the competition. And that's why Captain Arbaugh, who my fact I like to uh, hear this evening, is because she's actually uh, doing the, some of the practice in the field. So if you have any, this is going to be, this is our first inaugural team that we're actually putting on. Um, if you have high school, high schools that are interested in, um, in advocacy, getting out there, getting on their feet, then please contact uh, Captain Peter Syak or my office or myself, and we'll be sure to uh, get you all on the next one. Make sure it's something great to put on your high school, your high school application for college and things like that. Um, so uh, we provide all the materials, all the links are willing to be provided. So we will provide the purchase of the materials to the EPA, and we'll provide our own knowledge. Uh, so subject to your questions. Before we go to the chaplain, just a quick reminder, if you have questions, raise your hand, we'll bring the card to you. You can ask your first question live. We've got three questions so far, all came in via Facebook, so we are streaming live on Facebook. Again, just raise your hand, we'll bring a card and a pencil to you. We've got one right over here, and uh, the other people bring it to us, we'll try to answer it for you. This is your chance to hit the staff up, hit them with some harpies. Okay, chaplain, Holy Week, I know you've got a lot of announcements. Thanks, Leslie. Yes, good evening. I'm Chaplain Way, the uh, garrison chaplain, and I want to just highlight a few things that we're doing for you in your free exercise of religion and your spiritual fitness. Highlighting on the slide is the Holy Week, the week of Easter, and it's already begun. We're processing through that. You can see we have a full array of both Protestant and Catholic services available to you. We would highlight just the uh, sunrise service on Sunday morning, 0630, in uh, Freedom Field. That's right next to the chapel. We're praying that there'll be good weather for that. So also would be moving into the chapel. Uh, you can also see these on our Facebook page, the Camp Pumpkin's Faith Community as well, and most of them are, are posted on the command channel and the command zone. Just one other, or two other items I'll just highlight, just not on the slide, uh, coming up, the National Day of Prayer on May 1st. We're going to have a luncheon here at 1130 in the CAC, and we'll be sponsoring and putting out more information about that, talking to all command units and soldiers. And then lastly, we are putting together our Vacation Bible School BBS project for the summer. It's selected dates for July 28th through August 1st. Looking right now to just fill our volunteer spots and actually be able to provide that for our children. Last year it took about 60 volunteers to put that on for about 160 children. A great project. So if you have interest in that, please look on our web, web page and the Facebook as well to help support some of that. No other questions for me, and I'll be talking about the gentleman. Sergeant McCombs. We're located in the Indian Pipeline Park. On the second floor of the health clinic, no hours of operation, 0730 to 630. Uh, type of service we provide with federal exams, uh, cleaning, general dentistry, and service and education service for children from the age of zero to three years old. Of course, the priority of care is always um, the activity. Family members, public health, tri care, of course, the children and adults. Um, next is a new thing we just started about two weeks ago. We do have a uh, daily dental cleaning appointments from 0 7 30 to 8, 0 8 30 to Monday, Monday to Friday, Monday through Friday, for dependents on active duty members aged 6 to 30. Just give us a phone call at 753 6559 and make an appointment, and we should. Good evening, I'm Shelley Kennedy, the principal of Humphreys High School, and a lot of things have happened since our last town hall. For example, we have a brand new director of DODEA. His name is Mr. Tom Brady, and he will be on Camp Humphreys on April 24th when we have our official ribbon cutting ceremony. So we're excited to have him here. The top DODEA officials for the Pacific will be here with him. And so, uh, Mr. Brady, you will send out emails to all parents for both the high school and the elementary school so that you'll know what time he will be here because he is going to set up a forum for you to have a chance to meet with him. The activities that we have, so yesterday we started our fourth quarter. It's hard to believe we're already at fourth quarter. The year is going very quickly. 
Friday, we have parent-teacher conferences, and they will be set up in our gymnasium. Again, this is done for your convenience so that you can come in in one fell swoop and see all your child's teachers. Uh, report cards will be given out at that time. That's why we hope to get you there. So come, pick up your child's report card, and then those teachers will be right there for you to have conversations with them. So it's not an appointment. It's just a drop-in, come on in, we'll take care of that. Also, anyone with outstanding pre-registration has got to get that taken care of. So we'll try to get that all done at that same time. And then again, April 24th at 2 o'clock, we're going to have a grand or ribbon cutting ceremony at our school. But graciously, the elementary school has decided to let you tour their facility as well. So from 1 to 2, people could go and tour our beautiful elementary facility and then come over to the high school auditorium at 2 o'clock and then we'll have an official ribbon cutting ceremony to celebrate this great facility that we're working on at our school. And we have a special music performance that will happen at um, Far East Music. I'm not sure if you're aware of it. Our high school students all have some very great opportunities as they participate in sports and some of the academic programs. They have what is called a Far East Conference. And we are hosting the Far East Music Festival at our high school. Uh, they're going to share the time between Osan and our school, but we're very fortunate. These students are going to perform at our grand opening, so there's one opportunity to hear them. That would be a brief little tidbit of what they can do. And then Friday at 7 o'clock, official concert. We encourage all of you to come. We've got an auditorium that will hold 900 people. These are the most talented musicians across the Pacific in our schools, and they're going to perform a free piece of entertainment for you that I'm sure will be very impressive. So please feel free to join us in our auditorium at 7 o'clock on Friday, April 25th. And then the day for students to accelerate is May 14th. That time is getting closer, and that's for those students that families of PCS, they have to get their high school credits done in time, they advance and do their work ahead of time so that they can leave here with the graduation or credits, their full credits that they've earned, so that when they go back stateside, if they're getting there and those schools have already stopped, they've earned their full credits for that. So be sure you check with the registrar if you're PCS and you have that deadline to get that application in place. Okay. And then we're very excited that on June 4th, graduating class for the Twin Peaks High School will happen. So very exciting. And that's our basic schedule. So at this time, Humphrey Central Elementary is going to come. Hello, I'm Jamie Wallman. I'm the assistant principal at Humphrey Central Elementary School. And we have a few dates that, that we can meet with Rosman and um, report cards for the uh, on Wednesday, April 16th. Uh, kindergarten Roundup. Friday, uh, April 18th, and that's extremely important that we get everyone in that, that has incoming kindergartners. And throughout the summer, if, if anyone knows of any kindergartners, please uh, let them know to the school so that we get all of those students counted so that we can start school with just the number of teachers that we need for the kindergarten students. Everybody else will be there as well, but especially for the kindergartners. Uh, we have parent conference. And on um, April 21st through the 25th, uh, a lot of people on the garrison are going to come out and help us to stem the needle for the kids. And a lot of people are just going to go up there and do their best work for the kids. Uh, so I'm going to help them come out and show us their, their true talents and what they can do for the kids. And I think about that. And we have some really plans and really nice stuff. And we sure want everybody to come out and see what, uh, what our kids can do and what our teachers going on, we want them to be very involved with us. So, the weekend, though, is April 30th, and um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you guys on April 30th. Hi, I'm Mr. Kimmerow uh, from the Commissary. Uh, I know that most of you have noticed the year designations for the kindergarten. It's actually started in uh, February. We have a uh, here from Becky Hickville. This is not only Camp Humphrey, it's Pacific wide. Uh, there's various issues. Uh, the, the largest impact is weather on the East Coast. Uh, 
most of this yogurt comes out of New Hampshire when they get slammed. It went on for a while. We did not ship it. Uh, the, the problem being overseas, there's a six week lag time. We order something today, and we do not see the results of it for six weeks. It's come over. So we do have some problems with it. We're hoping that uh, within a couple of weeks everything will catch up. Uh, we will have a delivery on Thursday. I can't guarantee how much we will get. Uh, I've got my required delivery dates of all the stuff that was ordered. Uh, we are not getting everything that we want. Uh, it, it, they've been cutting it. Hopefully it will catch up. Uh, the same with the almond breeze milk. But various issues with that. One of the biggest issues right now on the milk is that WIC just uh, authorized the almond breeze for, for the WIC participants. That impacted our um, ordering greatly in, in the amount on hand. It almost tripled the amount of sales. However, uh, we do have quite a bit coming in. We, we've uh, actually ordering 60 cases a week now. But then again, it takes six weeks from the time I put an to see the results. They're overseas. It's just a fact of life and living here in New Hampshire. Uh, hopefully you'll see more yogurt coming in. You'll see this uh, the almond breeze uh, and the organic milk uh, improved here very soon. Uh, keep in mind that our store is only 11,000 square feet of cell space. Very limited uh, amount of cell space for the amount of sales we do. We do over a million two hundred thousand third largest sales in Korea. We will probably exceed uh, some of the other stores in the very near future. Uh, we do have a 40 foot reaper refrigerator unit that we just dropped out back. Uh, that is going to eliminate some of our issues with frozen product. We have more freezer space that we will store it in. Uh, that should be up and running tomorrow. So hopefully some of the things we're attempting to do will, will help out. Uh, some of the storage space for dry goods later uh, this year, mid-year, the installation is giving us additional storage space that we will be able to be we will be able to bring additional items in and keep them here on the installation and not wait for the daily deliveries. Uh, we only get deliveries once a day right now. We are trying to increase that to two. Uh, however, this this is uh it, it's still going to be very difficult number of people we have coming into the installation based on the square footage we have uh, it's very difficult. Let me do your questions. Yes, I'll give the Good evening everybody. Uh, I only got two quick things. First, uh, I'm going to jump down to the second part of our slide. The uh, Earth Day we're going to be supporting with different events. Uh, now the main thing I want to talk about is the theater. We all know it's opening tomorrow. The first show will be Captain America which is Great show in 3D. I saw it last week. It was cool. So please get out there, seven, uh, 1900. And this weekend for the kids, Rio 2. Big show in 3D this weekend. So again, the theater was the, with the digital, us going digital. The product that we're offering is state of the art. Um, before, I hate to say this, but I was embarrassed of it. But now that we've gone digital, the quality is great. It's a great entertainment value for the family. Uh, so please get out and, and check it out and give it a shot because it is very, very good. And, uh, again, state of the art. So that's all I have. Okay. Hey, thanks. Uh, listen, I know we've inundated you guys with a lot of information. Just a reminder, we'll post all these slides on our website, as well as any questions that are asked <laughs> tonight. We'll post those answers on the website when we post the slides. So again, uh, before we go any further, and I entertain, I've got four questions here. Again, it's open to the audience, or if we get any more on Steve, on Facebook, Steve, just let me know. Uh, before we go any further, thanks to uh, the exchange, and thanks to DECA for providing the drinks, the pizza, and the snacks. Round of applause for those folks. Thanks a lot. Okay, very first question. Uh, I'll take this one, but Bert, I may need some help with this. I think I know the answer. We get asked this question quite a bit, mostly about folks arriving new within the first few months of uh, arriving at Humphreys. Uh, this came in via Facebook. It says, does Camp Humphreys have a recycle program on base for units or individuals? Well, I can tell you we have a, a recycling contract. Uh, the dumpsters you see around the installation, we have a central contract that contractor picks up all the trash, he takes it off the installation, and he separates it by plastic, by, uh, by metals, everything, and that's built into the contract, and they go out there and verify that periodically that he is doing his job. 
That's why you don't see you don't have a lot of the recycled containers around the installation because it is it would be a violation of the contract. Is that accurate, Bert? Okay, hopefully that answered the uh, question for Rob. But please go ahead. Okay, the next one. Uh, food service workers at the PX food court have been told that the facility is exempt from the peninsula-wide AC heat control. They have tried to uh, get the key for the control unit and have been unsuccessful. And they were told to contact the garrison commander for the key. So, Steve, were you even aware of that one? Okay. Uh, Bert, if you could, we can follow up on that one tomorrow. Uh, let's see, I know it gets hot back there. For the folks working. I think that is an exempt facility for the AC condition, air conditioning season. So I think last year we had a problem with the uh, heat pump. Uh, that's actually the first time we've had that. Yeah, Bert, you can take that down and look into it tomorrow. And I think schools and CDC are also exempt. Okay. It's almost air conditioning season. Uh, the next one for Dodds High School. Well, actually, it's probably Dodds High School. Um, this one came in Facebook. Why is the high school registrar? Asking for for the soldier copy of the soldier slash sponsors ORV or ERV to re-register their student. No other Dodd school asked for that. Why or there shouldn't a copy of the orders reflecting command sponsorship and the current heroes of the sponsor be adequate? Okay, I'm happy to answer that because they're talking about my registrar who is following the rules to the letter. Uh, they received new training this year, and this is a new DODIA policy for us that we have to do that. Because I, we've all asked that same question. It seems redundant, but the fact is we have to ask for the most current record and put that in, and that is to just check eligibility and make sure students are registered. You know, we have to have a complete file. All schools should be following that policy. For ORBs and ERBs. Yes. Okay, because I, I guess that yeah, it goes on there's a entire paragraph. But have, tell the. I mean, if that person wants to call the school tomorrow, we can help him with that and address those issues. And, yeah. yeah, I think that was the concern. It's, it's PI okay. information. Yeah. Okay, Go very good statement. And I, um, I will check on that for you. I will check with Dr. Ellis, who is at our DSO, because this is who's directed that we, we collect this information. Okay, and, and that's very important to know that that is the concern because it's, you're right, that's confidential information in, in, in those files. It's it's kept in a confidential lock facility in our building. I mean, a double lock room. I mean, we, we keep all those records confidential as we do for student records. But very good point, and I will take that up with the district office. Thank you, Carol. So, um, they not accept those orders instead because you're on the orders, and has that The orders work for one part, but I think it's different employees that have, it's civilian contractors that have that together, I believe. Yeah, so but for soldiers, it is the... Have, they wouldn't have ERVs or ORVs because that's going to the military. So, that's the point. I know okay. I never turned in an ORV, but for my orders, it has my command sponsorship confirmation number, <coughs> the list of my command sponsor dependents, and it has my heroes on there. And actually, when I re-registered my children this year, because my heroes July, they asked me for my extension, my AIP appointment, and I gave that to them. And that has all the information. And it's minimal PII, but it's still PII. So that would probably be a lot better. Okay. Let me tell me the other term, the ORB, and what was the, the other? ORB and ERB. That has okay. all of our military career history on okay. that. I will check it. with Dr. Ellis and get this information, and I can just send it out to all families in an email. When I get that response, okay. yeah, sure. I think that was part of the concern for this. This one, it said, uh, "Why would they know need to know my career assignment history?" ERB and ORB. I think it's probably the same thing. Okay, good, good points. Uh, Shelly, if you could just unpack Dave's out of here, we'll post that answer. Okay. Find out All right, tomorrow. that's how we'll do it. We'll post it. We'll okay, this one came in. I think it's for safety. Uh, if you could give Mr. Colson the microphone back there, he probably needs to answer this one. It says, "Is there anything that can be done to uh, to promote safety?" While crossing the crosswalks, many soldiers and family members, civilians, and community members uh, walk in front of vehicles without using the crosswalk, and they'll just walk through the, the, the crosswalk at the traffic light is red or yellow. Red. Uh, what's going on? There's so much construction going on where there's actually no uh, crosswalks in place. But what we are doing, we are going out doing surveys and 
trying to get as many crosswalks as we possibly can. But what I ask everyone to do is if you can uh, take, stop, look, and then cross the roadway, uh, even if there's no crosswalk there, but if there's one 20 feet down the road, please walk down to that crosswalk. That's what I ask everyone to do. But if you don't see one and you have to get across the roadway because there's no sidewalk, I would expect you and everyone else would expect you to stop and look. That's the best thing we can do right now because there's so much construction going on. Thank you. I think that's really community enforcement from all of us. If we can just reinforce that to our friends, neighbors, and battle buddies there. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, we had a vehicle uh, pedestrian accident recently. Uh, and about to turn off near the super gym where you turn into the uh, G Avenue family housing. Uh, very poorly marked crosswalk. Uh, the individual turned in there in an SUV and hit someone crossing uh, the vicinity of the crosswalk. I don't think they're really in the crosswalk, Joe. Okay, so it's very dangerous with all the construction traffic. So, yeah, it's an entire community that needs to be set up. Okay, the next one for DES. Uh, when is the next bicycle roundup? It's currently ongoing right now. Uh, so far, we've uh, we've picked up, I want to say, about 30 bicycles. Uh, we're continuing it uh, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Friday is the last day. So if you want to register your bicycle real quick before it gets rounded up by the MPs, there are some registration forms in the back of the, uh, of the room at the DS table. Just fill it out, uh, take it home, put the serial number in, bring it back to 544. Dave Kirby and his uh, staff will give you a, uh, a bicycle number. Okay, a uh, follow-on question. For that one, what happens to the grills and the bicycles after the roundup? Are they occasionally offered to the community for sale or any other? Uh, they are uh, occasionally offered. After, uh, we have a certain amount of, uh, we have a certain period of time we have to maintain those. I want to say it's 90 days. Uh, after that, uh, we will DES will get with uh, the Garrison leadership and find out if they want to offer these back to the community or turn those over to uh, any of our for uh, construction. So after the roundup. Uh, you know, watch Garrison notes. It will be uh, highly publicized if you know we get these uh, back out to the community. Thanks, Bob. Next one, Steve Pena, the Exchange. With the opening of the movie theater, did the prices remain the same? Yes, same prices. That's good news. Good. Okay. Okay. Well, that's all the questions I have on Facebook, Steve. Any more? Okay. Any more from the community? I'm sorry they experienced that. Uh, normally, uh, when you call the 119 uh, and you're speaking English, and of course you have uh, Korea National on your phone, they will they will put that person on hold and transfer them automatically to uh, uh, the U.S. agent for this. Uh, that is what you know they're supposed to do. Uh, we know uh, uh, over two on that. Uh, what I can do is uh, you know, with uh, Matt Spritzer, our fire chief. Emergency service providers in uh, uh, Pyeongtang City and in the Hanjiang Police Local Area, and, and we will be able to fix the issue. Great point. I, I will tell you, you know, it's a challenge for, for all of our family members and all of those that are using uh, You know, as much as we try uh, to force it, uh, the local Young Tech City government into, into doing that, at the end of the day, it's going to host nation and it's a challenge for them. Absolutely. You know, they, we do have, I think, an established MOA, Bob. So we do have a memorandum of agreement with the local city. And they did agree to do that. So they're, they're failing at that point. So that's, you know, that's what they're saying. Yes, ma'am. I was just going to make a suggestion. It's possible that if they were supposed to put them on hold and transfer, they may have put them on hold and these people may have thought they hung up. That maybe we need to put that information out that that's what's going on. You know, double check and make sure that is what's going on, but then let the people that live off post know that. Because if they don't know that, they're automatically going to think, hey, they hung up on me. 
because I'm sure there's no music going on. Absolutely. And I think, James, that's what you were saying at the newcomers were reading, right? And we advise them to go ahead and call us. Let us translate for them the word of God. Steve, if you could, we'll just do a big publicity push on that. I think that would put them to sleep. And the entire staff will stick around for a couple of minutes after, after this and we'll talk privately. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. That's all right. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by not um, I tried to find out when the next one was. Yeah, I tried calling today. Um, the phone rings and rings. It's two of the contact numbers and the other one is a cell phone contact. Yeah, and they come out of Daegu. Yeah, so yeah, they put that on periodically. Any other questions? Yes. Sir, mine's not a question. Uh, Al Lacks, Monday Employment Readiness. Uh, my sister's spouse looking for a job on post. Uh, Mr. Pena, I just want to uh, thank you, sir, for the increase of family members hiring at the exchange. And you can see it. And thank you for your support, sir. And that's coming from the spouses. Any other questions? Also on our Facebook, as we have jobs that are available at the GM Pinto Clinic, I have now been posting those as job openings on the clinic. So if you check our Facebook periodically, anytime we have a new position that's open, both KSC and KBS and BS employees, I post that on our Facebook. It, that doesn't always get out to the position. So please keep track of our Facebook for openings at the clinic as well. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Last call. Anything on Facebook? Well, thank you, everyone, for coming out. Our next town hall meeting, community town hall, 15 July 2014. Hope to see you all there. Uh, Thanks to all the service providers. They'll stick around for a few minutes. Come on up and ask them some hard questions. Thanks.